for the first time in 2024. It is time to bring the man in. It is Nico. How you doing, brother? Hey, what is going on, John? SDH family, happy 2024. We are back, baby. Mm -hmm. uh, find out, This is actually the first day I'm doing anything content-related of the year. I was taking the uh, last couple of days to just hang out with the family, get the kids situated, and uh, I'm back, baby. You know, kind of uh, missed on a couple of uh, breaking news there by a couple of hours and things, but... Um, you know what? Sometimes you lose some, sometimes you win some. Well, and I know that one of the ones that we wanted to talk about out of the blocks was uh, Nico Ladero heading to the purple team. And when uh, I know that you you had the intel on that one out of the blocks, but Nico and Orlando, it's an interesting play here. I don't know what they're going to do with him, but it's an interesting play nonetheless. Yeah, there was actually uh, a big market for him uh, right at the, until the end. There were uh, really two options that he was heavily considering. Uh, neither of those were inner Miami. Uh, that's kind of the news that I kind of kept seeing from people that I just think wanted it to happen. And they just kind of put dots together because of Luis Suarez and even Chris Henderson being part of that club. Uh, but beyond interest, he never went down to being close to him moving there. Uh, but, you know, there was a lot of interest from several teams, uh, San Jose, Houston, um, obviously uh, Orlando. But the the big factor here and what actually was the deciding factor for Nico uh, was a conversation with Oscar Pereja. Apparently, I'm told that Oscar Pereja uh, had a big desire to have Nicolas Odero in his squad, uh, really liked. The, the leadership aspect, the presence, the uh, soccer profile for what he's envisioning next year, uh, and why not? This is an Orlando team that uh, has a lot of weapons. There are still some that uh, we don't know if they'll be back or not, but at the end of the day, uh, there's a lot of talent, and he is a player that can come in, uh, be a creative player. Uh, he can ultimately amplify all the talent uh, within that team, has two really good center defensive midfielders behind him. So it, it just gives him the freedom to just roam up top, don't have to do a lot of sacrificing, although he probably will because he's Nicolas Guerrero and he covers a bunch of ground. But I think for him to be able to just play up top, have that safety net behind him, uh, I think it's going to be real good. Uh, but ultimately, like I said, Oscar Pereja talking to Nicolas Todero, telling him how much he wanted him there was a deciding factor. Uh, obviously, he has uh, Facundo Torres there, uh, someone who he's had a long relationship with, who he knows as well. Uh, so I think it's going to be a good fit. I'm not surprised that there was so much interest from so many teams for Nicolas Todero, whether it was... Um, Officially of our unofficially simple calls to just inquire about his situation. Uh, I'm glad that he went to Orlando. I think he's a team that can do a lot of good things next year. And I'm excited to watch him there. So then what does now Seattle do when it comes to trying to find, I'm not going to say, you know, do the hashtag Ladero replacement, but what does now Seattle do to try and fill those spaces so you still have as much continuity under Brian Schmetzer as possible coming into 24. What's on the radar? Uh, well, you definitely don't get a player for player replacement. Uh, I don't think that's the vision of the team. I think it'd be silly to try to find a player that could do the things that Nico did. Uh, the caliber of talent that you were blessed with uh, when you got Nicolas Adero um was obviously done with some analytics and things and i think seattle has done a very good job at looking beyond the field to really get players that are going to provide you with everything that nico did uh, but the plan on the field at this moment in time is uh working with what you have the core group that is still there uh from Yamer Gomez Andrade, from uh, Albert Rusnak and Joe Paulo, all those guys, and then bring other players that are going to provide you with what you didn't have last season, which was some goals, some speed, some um, 
one-on-one -on -one players that are going to be dynamic and hard to cover. Uh, so Pedro de la Vega is the guy that is obviously in the works. Uh, as of last night, uh, it was still not official. It was still not done. Um, as I have been told, actually, just right before I got on this call uh, with you guys, um, there's still a medical exam uh, that needs to happen. All the medical stuff has not been done uh, at the moment. All of the contract stuff is being looked, reviewed. There was a little bit of a back and forth in terms of the percentage that the news wanted to keep for the player. Uh, Seattle obviously wanted the uh, entire entirety of the rights of the player. So there was some back and forth there. Uh, but as of right now, it was still not official, still fall apart. I've been a part of a lot of these talks and giving people details behind the scenes. And that's why I've been very quiet in terms of what I've been hearing, because I do know that it's delicate i would call it i think it's delicate and it, it, it could fall apart if, if things don't go a certain way but once it does and once it gets pushed through there's still a medical component that's going to happen and then eventually the player will come in but he is that player that is supposed to bring something different to the team uh i think albert rusnak is going to be your 10 and i think pedro del vega is going to play out wide uh that's just what i think will happen uh I think you don't pick up Albert's option if you don't think he can provide you with the least, uh, being that, uh, yeah, I guess a safe player for that position, someone that's going to put the right passes, is going to have the right attitude, is going to understand the system, uh, is going to contribute. Is, is he going to be an absolute wrecking ball like maybe Lodero was when he first came on? No. But he's going to be a player that's going to do a lot of things right. And um, in my opinion, what the club wants to do is have a real high floor just to start off the season and see how other pieces can come in. Colorado is another intriguing one. And the, the running gag that we've been having on the show the last day or so is who are these Colorado Rapids and what have you done with the Colorado Rapids? Because they're investing, it looks like Zach Steffen with a, a three and a, or a three plus one and Georgie Mihailovic coming in uh, there, this investment. Where is the, where is this investment coming from? We've never seen stuff like this from Colorado. We've seen like waivers and little tweak deals here, but now they want to drop the hammer and bring in a Zach Steffen and they want to bring in a Georgie Mihailovic to help things out. Yeah. I mean, it's a little bit of a few aspects to why this big change um, what I've been hearing is that clearly uh, this thing can ambition to be a, a lot better than they have been. Um, Chris Armas has a lot to do with that. Uh, Chris Armas coming in, he has certain expectations before taking on um, this team, and those expectations will be applied to this season. Um, there is obviously a desire to change entirely because of where MLS is at. At this day and age, they see what's going on around the league. They see what's going on with the Western Conference. They don't want to stay behind. They feel like there's a good uh, following there. So uh, I think this team is doing what they should have been doing maybe two years ago, to be quite honest. Um, and uh, the Zach Steffen um, acquisition is a good one. It's a great one. If Berkey showed anything to MLS followers and MLS teams is that having a great goalkeeper can change your entire franchise. I mean, having that guy back there, that's going to just give you that safety net. That's going to be a leader. Uh, that's uh, going to be your everyday guy is important. Uh, Berkey was fantastic. Now, um, uh, you know, Pedro Galesa, when he went into uh, Orlando city, I praised that move over and over again. We've seen what, the fruits of that has been uh, so when you when you get a guy like that and you spend a little bit of money, uh, I think it's a big big move. And when it comes to Jordy, man, this is a talented guy, right? I mean, sometimes you go to Europe, things don't pan out, you don't maybe blow up immediately, so you go back. And there was a lot of teams interested in him. Uh, me and you love the way he he played. If, I, if I'm not mistaken, uh, you know, he's a guy that could do a lot of things. His uh, soccer IQ is high, tactically gifted. Uh, understands the game. Uh, I think he's extremely talented, and he could be a real important piece for what Colorado wants to do next next season. So I, I think you're right. I think it's uh, 
there was a BC with, when he comes to this team and, and what, what was happening before and what's going to happen now. And um, you hope that he kind of works out because then what happens if you get all these players and you're still at the bottom of the Western Conference, then I, I'm not sure if anybody has answers after that. Yeah, I mean, that's what you're, you're looking at. It's um, you're, you're looking at all of this and you're going, OK, new coach. You're letting him breathe a little bit. You're letting him breathe, bring in players. And they're big names. Biggest thing for Zach Steffen, though, as long as he's in a system where he doesn't have to work with his feet and he can just sit there and he can grab the ball, outlet, go, and he doesn't have to do anything at ground level to try to to send the offense forward. I think that that's going to be big. I, I'm interested to see what Chris Armas is going to do philosophically. I mean, because we're we're locked into the idea of what we saw at Red Bull. We know what we saw in Toronto, which was square peg round hole or square peg S curve. I mean, it was not happening. And Chris Armas was a quick exit. And then he goes over and works out with leads. I'm just interested to see philosophically what Chris Armas is going to bring to the table. Is it going to be Red Bullsian with Georgie Mihailovic up top? Or is it going to be something that breeds a little bit? This is going to be intriguing for me. Yeah, no, I'm with you. I think that's the biggest question mark and what we'll all be looking at all the way from the preseason and early stages. What's the soccer module? What is the plan and the way you're going to uh, decide to implement the curriculum that I'm sure has grown from when he was in MLS before? I expect it to be very versatile, very open-based, uh, very um, quick and... Um, effective uh, in terms of not a lot of passing. I think it's going to be very direct. There will be some high pressure moments in, in, in my opinion, uh, but at the end of the day, I think direct will be his play. That's just my opinion. Um, and But it'll be interesting with with because the, the big conundrum when it comes to being a new coach is you, you got to come in and kind of see the players that you have right now. And obviously you got the players that are on your list. These are the guys that I want to bring back. So do you built a module with the team that you have or do you just change everything that these players have done uh understand uh you know their instincts and just put them to what you want them to do so it's going to be very interesting i think he's a very qualified coach i was excited when uh he was um uh, announced as the new colorado coach and, and he makes a big difference you see it on the signings and i'm really looking forward to seeing the change on the field LAFC, Chiki Palacios gone, and uh, Chiki Palacios, you know, part of that back line. Uh, Chiellini at the age of 72 finally does retire. Uh, you're, you're wondering about Carlos Vela. Is Carlos Vela coming back? And you bring in Hugo Lloris at 37. McCarthy, I mean, we went over before all of this happened at the end of the calendar year. We were looking at all of the players that were leaving. I think it was 14 players who had contracts that were ending at the end of the calendar year. And now LAFC brings in Hugo Lloris and Nett because Max Crapo apparently wanted to have a large salary, a uh, large salary bump from what he was currently making. And you've got questions up top. Who's going to be there with Denny Buanga? What's Carlos Vela doing? Is he going to go to Real Sociedad? LAFC, I, I know we're all sitting there looking at Steve Chirundolo going, okay, it's LAFC. There's an anticipation and an expectation that they're going to be at the top of the West, but they've got a lot of questions, man. they got a lot of questions, and if we look at big parts of the season last year, uh, it wasn't all, you know, rainbows and, and, and happiness and – it was a breeze uh, that they struggled. And, and yes, this team, at the end of the day, if there's something that uh, was a big positive was that they were able to beat you in different ways and they were able to at least uh, not have the need to control the ball at all times. They would, would play pragmatic. They would play direct. Uh, but there are question marks. Uh, I'm with you in terms of Chiqui Palacios was big for this team. I mean, the, the, the two-way players – uh, at that position are not easy to find. Um, I think that the, the the player, the answer to Chicho Arango is still not there. Yes, Denis Buanga was, was fantastic, and he had a great season. 
but he's still a wide player. You don't have a nine. You don't have a player that can really do that. I expect Carlos Vela to be back, but under a very limited role. And if not limited, just what he did last season, right? He's not going to be your everyday guy. You're going to look into what up, what the opposition is. Can I play with kind of that false nine there and do things? Um, so I expect him to, you know, make a change there because I don't see uh, – 15, 16, 17 goal scorer that, that I feel like this team uh, needs at times. Uh, and then there's no questions about Dennis Buanga. It, it, will he stay? Will he go? And uh, Lloris, he's, it was interesting because he's not a, he's not a player of need, right? It's not, it's not something that you were looking for. Kripal was fantastic. You had Deb there at that position, but I think you really see learned something from getting Kalini, which is, a move that I criticize over and over and over again, yep. although maybe it wasn't uh, a home run right off the bat. At the end of the day, he ended up being important on the field. I think that he was a huge ambassador for LAFC and MLS in general, globalizing the brand. I think Larise does a lot of that. We're not going to talk about the books and the numbers and the salary because – there's literally no point at all for the amount of money that they're obviously reporting that he's coming in for. But let's talk about what he can provide. And it's a, a great goalkeeper with a bunch of experience. And that is going to be much like Kalini, this ambassador, this guy that's going to say, look, you can come to MLS, you can come to LAFC, you can play, you could be in a competitive league, and you can live in LA, you could have the lights and all of the things that come in with being an LAFC player. So I like the move. I, I'm not going to knock LAFC for bringing that aspect into it, but, but I will judge them if come June or July, this team is struggling in other phases of the game because they gave themselves that little bit of a luxury. Considering that they got to have folks who need to be in front of Lloris to help stop the shots. Absolutely. hundred percent. I'm looking at that, that back line. What are you going to do to the back line to help out Hollingshead and Palencia? Uh, what, what are you going to do there to help them out with a 37 year old keeper behind them? Uh, and it also, yeah, because was- Aaron long struggled last season and, and he didn't look like the guy that, they thought they were going to sign, if you ask me, right? Uh, and Murillo, he's been lights out for this team, but he can't do it alone. And there's the question mark of Ilya Sanchez and how much is he going to be able to do to filter that so he doesn't put as much pressure on your back line? Because there were times last season where I thought that he looked gassed. He, he looked like he needed some help. Uh, and he didn't quite have it in terms of having another player that would do the defensive aspects of the game in that midfield. So, yes, I think that there's a lot of question marks in front of Loris. And also a word from Mundo Segunda this morning. It looks like Mario Gonzalez might be on a loan to Sporting Gijon for the season as well. And then, you know, obviously cross town, you're looking at the Galaxy, and what are the, what are the Galaxy going to do? in a year that is important for them. And it looks like, you know, folks are sitting there going, all right, we're going to drop, you know, we're going to drop eight figures on folks and uh, bring in $10 million transfer fees and all this kind of stuff. So, I mean, you, you sell Boyd to get another international spot. And so you've got this international slot to help out Ricky Pooge. What are you doing there? I mean, this is a big season for LA for LA Galaxy as well. And LAG looks like they're going to try and drop some money. What a shock. Yeah, I mean, it's total, almost total rebuild in terms of those, those big faces, right? You got Ricky, and that's your new franchise player, so the new face of the franchise, if you will. But you got to go in and get a replacement for, for uh, Javier Hernandez. Yep. Uh, you you got to get a guy that's going to be that matador up top, uh, LA Galaxy have always been known for having a big Mexican uh, influence player there. So it's going to be interesting if they go that route. Uh, there aren't many uh, groundbreaking Mexican players right now in the in the striker position, but uh, maybe they'll go that route. But there is a lot to do with that team. Now, there were players that 
I think before injuries showed us that they could be useful. But I feel like Greg Vanny has no room for error. It, that 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 seat is still boiling hot, and so he's going to need results right off the bat. What about Portland? Uh, we saw the news about uh, Jimmy Chara going back to Junior. Uh, Neville is making moves here. He's kind of he's kind of tweaking here, tweaking here, tweaking here to try to bring things his way. What have you seen down the freeway with your Cascadia rivals? Uh, well, the Kamal Miller was a, a big one. Uh, I felt like that move was important. Uh, Who's gonna, okay? So let me get back to that. Who's going to defend for Messi and friends now? I have no idea. I, I, I really don't know how you. And, and and this is the crazy thing about inner Miami is that sometimes I feel like there's two heads involved with what's going to happen to the team. And I think like one head went and got Kamal Miller because he's a international player with a lot of experience, one of the best uh, center backs, if you will, you know, top 10, if you, if you want to do it that way or whatever uh, within MLS and you got a lot of things going on. So he's going to be our guy. And then someone else said, Hey man, you know what? There's, someone else that we could come in and bring and he might have a little bit more flourish. And, you know, so that's kind of what I see within the Miami. I have no idea if, if there really is just two heads that are leading this project, but it just, it's not very coherent. Now I have no idea who's going to be your top defender there right now. I mean, is Gonzalez Perez going to come back and, 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 he, he, and signed, uh, he signed an extension with river. I think, I think he's locked in. Well, so that that's out of the way. So what what's going to happen whenever you have Tata Martino and you have that type of money and freedom? Because this is going to be the first year that they work without those sanctions. I'm guessing they want to go out there and make a big move. Uh, but it, it was kind of interesting. Right now, I could tell you to your question, I don't think it was going to be that defensive back line that's going to hold or keep them from having to rescue a game 4-3, 3-4, 5-4. So it's going to be interesting what Chris Anderson and the rest of that club do in that regard. I know. I want to get back to Portland, but since we're riffing here on, on Messi and friends, I've, I've got to ask. I mean, right now you're staring at Messi and friends with the addition of Luis Suarez. There's talk of Marcus Rojo. And, and literally, I, I I think it's going to be like a, a 2 seven, one, or maybe a 2-8 when it comes to defense and formation. I mean, this this thing for me, Take the over every single week. Yeah. I, I mean, seriously, juice boxes, man, lock the over down every single chance you get. A and what I think is going to happen, and we talked about it in between Christmas and New Year's, I think you're going to see Messi and friends come out with the, the Super Friends lineup out of the blocks in as many games as possible to get a big point total and then knowing that you're going to be in multiple competitions and having to do other things when you're going to have to rest, folks, I think they're going to try to get out to a fast start and be way ahead of everybody else in the East where everybody's going to sit there and go, oh, they're going to, they're going to run over everybody. It's Messi and friends. Look at that. And, you know, they're going, to have like a big point. they're going to have a big point total early because they've started everybody, and they're going to try to hang on because of rest and schedule compression and multiple competitions. I think everybody's going to freak out if they get a big point total early, but that's because that's when you can have all of Messi and friends together as a unit, knowing that the schedule is going to be different later on down the line. Yeah, that's probably what Tata is envisioning as well. Uh, but I I'm still wondering what version of Luis Suarez you're going to get. I mean, I've been hit with a bunch of comments and posts of go look at him play in Brazil and look at the, look. I'm not saying that the guy is not talented. I'm not saying that the guy can't still do it. What I'm saying is that the the wheels of that bus are stuck with some super glue and tape, and you're waiting for them to fall off at some point. Don't tread and, on those tires, brother. Yeah, yeah. There's no thread there. You know, you you put the quarter in. Is the whole thing still up there? I mean. What I'm saying is that MLS is a lot more challenging than people realize. I've talked to a bunch of players at, a, away from the, the microphones, and they've admitted to me the travel, the the, the difference of climate, the difference of fields, um, some of the work weeks that happen. It, 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 it's a beat on the body. And, and I've seen players at the end of the year just 
man, my whole body hurts. I, I'm aching here, there, that, and having Luis Suarez with all those issues, I, I'm just not so. I'm not so that he's gonna come in here and be a 20 goal scorer like something. He's just gonna come in and just do even more than Buanga or do more than Cucho, who to me, are in a better point in their career, obviously, than, than, than Luis Suarez. So kill me, beat me, and think that I'm this guy that's just hating on Luis Suarez, but I, I just don't see it. So where is this team going? I don't know. I've been really amazed, and I guess I shouldn't be, about how much influence Lionel Messi has on this roster and, and who's coming in, who's coming out, uh, because on paper – I don't know if I'm impressed with, with, with what's happening in, in Miami right now. All right. So what's going on now that this is your first day back? What's going on with Soccer Bar and Pulso Sports now that we've turned the page to 2024? Well, uh, we're hoping to get started this Thursday at Soccer Bar. We're going to talk about some of these moves. We're going to talk about the future of Inner Miami. We're going to talk about Nicolas Um, uh, Definitely, we're going to focus in on the Sounders and what's happening here, you know, 50-year anniversary for this team. How far can they get? Uh, what's the plan here for the team in uh, 2024. Uh, so that's kind of what we have going on on both sides. I'm just hoping to kind of get back on on the horse. Uh, like I said, there was a cup. There was a lot happening in, in between last time I talked to you mm -hmm. and and today. But I, I had to take some vacation as, as well to give my family some time. So now we'll see what's going on. Uh, to your question on Portland, I think it's going to be uh, interesting season. Uh, I, I'm not. Uh, Phil Neville guy, to be honest. I don't know if I, I know that's come across to you and your fan base. So I'm still not sure how that franchise is going to do, but some good moves. Um, there is a change there uh, of some players that have been there for a long time. Um, some big shoes to fill uh, for Phil uh, because of everything that Gio did uh, in general. I know that he didn't win no titles, but he always made this a competitive team every single year. So he's going to have a lot of pressure, but he's going to be fun. I'm excited to be back, uh, hoping to get on the horse and hopefully today have some updates on uh, Pedro, have some updates on uh, Nathan, uh, uh, the uh, Airquakes player, the Sanders trying to uh, finalize, or I'm told he's also finalized. So it's going to be a really busy week for me. No doubt about it. And as always, my friend, it's great to have you here on your Thursdays. Uh, which cup of coffee are you on? This is number one, and that's how you know that I'm still on vacation mode because wow. this is my first one. That means I woke up a little later, and the only reason why I didn't get on quickly is because I was trying to uh, talk to a source about uh, some potential stuff that I, I need to break something in your show. I promised you that I was going to break something in your show, and I'm going to do it. I'm going to work hard this whole week, try to get you something good for Thursday. As always, my friend, it's great to catch up with you and uh, work your sources, work your coffee, and we will catch up with you next Thursday. Great to have you back, Nico. Thank you, sir. Have a good one. All right. That is Nico Moreno, as always.